Hi, I'm Dr. Tan Mai, and I'm part of the Association of Practice Management Educators. And this lecture is one near and dear to my heart. It's how to find a job as an optometrist, especially if you're like me and were scared. I remember so clearly what it was to be a third or fourth year student and just didn't know how to talk to doctors, didn't know how to introduce myself, didn't know how to get my foot in the door, didn't know how to network, if you will. And so this lecture is all about doing those things and helping you out, especially if you're like me and scared. A quick thank you to VSP for their educational grant. Without the support from VSP, uh, quite frankly, lectures like this are impossible to put on. And so uh, definitely a thank you to them for understanding and supporting the future generations of optometrists. And the future is you. So I want to talk about optometry students like yourself. If you're like me, this is a picture I, I found of Google. I just Googled SCCO, which is my alma mater optometrist, uh, optometry students. And I found this picture. It looks like all these students are just extremely happy. They've got this hat for some reason. But yeah, you guys are students and looking to move on and you're excited about your career opportunities. I remember sitting actually here. This was my row, the third row. I would sit in the third row right in the middle, like right there <laughs> for four years. And uh, it's an exciting time, but know that finding your dream job takes a lot of work and I'm gonna help you do some of that work right now. So networking. You know, some might think it's fun, but others might think it's, you know, really challenging. You know, you are told how to network, but how do you do that? And why would any other doctor even care about you? So let's talk about those things. First off, just know that the best jobs, the very best jobs, just like the best practices, are never actually listed. They are sometimes exchanged behind the scenes through word of mouth or the shadow market, if you will. I'll give you an example. In 2020, we were looking for an associate and uh, we hired Dr. Chelsea Hodman right here. She had worked for us for as a pre-optometry um, technician in our office, uh, just doing the workups and answering phones and, and you know, filing things for us. And we knew that she had great work ethic, was a really extremely nice, high IQ, high EQ. And so when it was time to look for an associate, there was really no interview process. We just asked her, hey, let's have dinner. And we just met and we just asked her at that time, would you be interested in working with us? And she said, yes. And we said, oh, great. And so we hired her right out of school, no experience necessary. We knew that she was already a good fit. There was no uh, question marks for us. And uh, it was even a time when during 2020, um, during COVID, that graduating class had their MBO boards delayed quite a bit. But we hired her right out of school anyways and just started going. And uh, it, it was a great win-win uh, for both of us. Know that maybe some of you might have aspirations to open up your own practice, but it might still take uh, you know a couple of years to get going. And uh, you might be waiting for financing. And even if you want to open your own practice, working in other different modes of practice before you do it yourself is kind of a nice little private practice residency, if you will, because you'll learn a lot about what you like to do and what you don't like to do from doing that. Now, networking could be hard. When you asked me, um, you know, out of school, uh, if I'd rather do a lot of networking or, or, or rather die <laughs> instead than do a cold call, you know, gosh, the thought of doing cold calls was like death to me. And so, you know, how do you get your foot in the door? What if you don't know anyone? I didn't know anyone in, in the industry whatsoever. I didn't have a, a family member or my, my, my mom or dad that was an optometrist. I was also an introvert. So it's hard work, but uh, uh, with uh, the things I recommend uh, in this lecture, hopefully uh, you know, it's gonna help, especially those introverts out there like me, uh, meet and do networking in a great way. So if one of the first and best ways to network is just emailing people. So while Facebook and Instagram is great and uh, picking up the phone and calling people is great, that just takes a lot of sometimes uh, energy and it's challenging. And not everyone is on Facebook or Instagram. So um, whereas everyone has an email address. And so that's a good way to just reach out and, and, and meet people. It, it, lands up, it lands in their inbox and they can reply at their leisure versus if you try to interrupt them by walking into their office or cold calling them, they might just be too busy in the moment because they're seeing patients. They uh, might want to spend time with you they, you just caught them at a bad time by emailing them they can respond on their time and it might be a little bit more successful than trying to drop by unannounced and here's an example of what i might say in an email like that i might just say hi i am hello doctor i'm a, a third year uh, optometry student at seco i would then reference hopefully a mutual connection you might have maybe you're a fellow you might say hi i just want to reach out to a fellow seco alumni or you might have a mutual friend in common be like oh my friend tan mai has heard great things about you and he recommended that i reach out so having a little bit of a mutual connection is a good way to uh, introduce yourself and you might be you might just say casually you know i'm interested in practicing your area after graduating so we're going to take you out for lunch or coffee 
Just remember that also being a student is sort of a temporary superpower because you're not going to be a student forever, thank goodness. But the reason why it's a superpower is that once you are graduated and out, working out there as an optometrist, less people, especially in prior practice, uh, might want to meet with you. But if you're a student, it, it, it immediately disarms them a little bit. And they know that you're just trying to learn and meet people. And so it's a nice little superpower because it helps to disarm the person you're talking to because they know you're just a student trying to uh, learn and uh, use it while you can. I would email any doctors and hiring managers at any modes of practice. It could be a Kaiser. It could be at a um, ophthalmological management. It could be in academia. And I would just send emails asking for information interviews. They are a great way to network. Just say, you know, I'm interested in learning more about what it is to work at Kaiser, you know, or I wanted to just interview someone that worked in academia about uh, the day-to-day -day activities and what they enjoy and what they don't enjoy about working in that environment. And so setting up these informational interviews where you're just gathering information is a great way to connect, a great way to network. Ideally, you meet with the hiring managers at those different places. So you may be hiring the owner of the, of the business. Maybe you're hiring a, a hiring manager at, at these big HMOs or, and so, or an industry. And that's a good way to, to get started. Optometry meetings, of course, are a great way to start as well. They are always usually welcome to students. Local societies, like my local society was the Orange County Optometric Society, and we're always welcoming students and, and, and hosting them at our meetings. The AOA has great meetings. The Academy has great meetings as well. Uh, local buying groups, local alliances, and just ask them, you know, when you meet, when you meet these doctors, hi, you know, I'm, uh, I'm Tan Mai, and I'm interested in practicing in your area after I graduate. Uh, just hoping to take you out to lunch if I'm ever in the area. Can uh, and almost anyone would say yes. Would absolutely love to. And uh, if you can, just try to exchange. Give them your business card. Ask them if you can have their email address. And then you'll just drop them an email whenever you're in the area or to set it up and so that you guys can arrange hopefully for a more future meetings after meeting them at these optometry meetings. Now, Facebook groups are, are a good way to uh, reach out to you know hundreds and thousands of optometrists all at once. There are a lot of good ones out there. For instance, ODs on Facebook, ODs on Finance, Young Optometrists, uh, yo, Young ODs of America. These are groups, and you can simply just post that you're a student looking for opportunities in whatever area that you're looking to settle in afterwards. You'll be surprised at how these small ripples become really big waves of opportunity. And just by connecting with one person, even if they're not the one that ultimately hires you, they know someone that might be interested. They know others. And just say that, you know, your student would love to take any prize optometry out to lunch in that area. And you might be surprised who reaches out back to you. Remember when you're meeting with people though, don't ever ask for, I like to say, um, don't just ask for a job right out of the blue. It's a little awkward. I say it's similar to uh, marriage. You, know, you don't ask for someone's hand in marriage the first time you meet them. So date first and then marry them. <laughs> Similarly, asking for a job, I would ask for, you know, meeting for lunch, meeting for coffee, and just learning more about what they do. You know, uh, just asking if they know anyone in the area um, looking for an optometrist. Don't ask them directly if, they're, if they will hire you because that's just a little bit awkward. And so uh, start start slow. Uh, definitely take advantage of the opportunities you have at your school. For instance, uh, I would definitely join the private practice club. And the private practice clubs are usually hosting um, speakers and guest lecturers, and they come in. And these guest lecturers are usually uh, doctors or, or, or people in the industry who are very well connected. And these are the doctors that you want to network with because they know other, other doctors and they're connected with a lot of people. It's uh, very rare uh, when I do guest lecturing that someone actually walks up and asks me uh, and kind of introduces themselves as a student. And so the ones that do, they usually stand out a lot and I remember them quite well. And it's easy for me to recommend them onwards since I know they have a little bit of, uh, they're very proactive in meeting people. Uh, I would ask your professors, you know, they know they're well connected as well. They have a lot of uh, people in the industry constantly visiting them and trying to introduce them to new products and, and such. And so they're well, very well connected. And so I would reach out to your professors and get to know them as well. And just ask them if they know any other doctors in the area. You might be interested in practicing afterwards. Just remember, no one really cares much about a resume. Sure, if you're a valedictorian, that's nice and you can share what kind of clubs you're in. And But at the end of the day, it's more about who you know than what you know because people care more about that. It's that personal connection. It's that you know face-to-face -face meetings that's going to get you in the door. Uh, you know, 10, 10 steps ahead of the next one who just never uh, you know ventured to leave their, uh, their room. And so just get, getting your face shown about emailing doctors and try to meet them for lunch and their coffee. That's the best way to get to know people. Just remember, millions of people use um, Facebook, Instagram, but more people check their email. Now, if I'm meeting with the optometrist, what I would do is definitely I would show up early. You know, showing up late is, uh, that's 
you know, taboo. And then they, they show that you don't respect their time. I would definitely show up early. After I meet with the doctor, I would write a handwritten thank you note afterwards. Sometimes a quick email is fine as well, but I prefer handwritten. It just shows that next level effort. I would thank everyone that you met along the way, not just the doctor you're meeting with, but maybe it's the front office or staff or anyone else that uh, you met along the way. I would acknowledge everyone. Treats always go a long way. You know, you stop, stop by a local area and bring treats. This is powerful networking, people. You bring brownies and treats are a very powerful way to, to ingratiate yourself to your hosts and to show that uh, you're thankful for their time. And uh, it's just smart. They're always welcome. Uh, staff eventually also will love you as well. Because if you show up with brownies, the staff will love you. And they're often the gatekeepers to these uh, leaders, to these doctors. So if you, uh, you know, curry their favor, it will go a long way for sure. After you meet with the doctor, you know, I would recommend closing the loop. What I mean by closing the loop is that don't just meet with them once and disappear forever and never see them again. I would try to email them maybe just once a year or even a couple of times a year and uh, just email them little blurbs or things that you find interesting. So for instance, let's say it's a doctor that was a contact lens expert. I might send him a, I might read an article about the advances in contact lenses or dry treatments and I might email them a link to the article and say, hey, no need to respond. I just found this cool article about some new technology. Just thought you might find it inter interesting. So that's a good way of just closing the loop and just staying in close communication with them. Phone calling people and cold calling, it's not as necessary. You know, I, I actually discourage you from just uh, walking in unannounced to a practice and trying to interrupt uh, a bit, someone busy. It, it, instead, when you send them an email, they can respond back on, on their terms uh, at their leisure than if you drop by unannounced cold. And so I definitely recommend doing this, posting for fa on Facebook, sending emails, sending articles, meeting professors, you know, just, you actually don't need to call someone. You can just uh, simply do it from the comfort of your home by sending emails. Now, when you're at these events and you're networking at, let's say, a Thomas Society meeting, uh, don't just sit on your phone, <laughs> you know. It's also okay to come with a buddy. I understand. No, no, don't come with like 10 people and, you know, try to network with, with the doctor, 10 students at a time. That's a little bit awkward. You know, you, you coming with a friend can help a lot. Introduce yourself as a student. Just say, Hey, I'm Tan. I'm a second year optometry student. Just asking where they practice and, and learn about what they're, you know, what motor practice they're in is a good way just to start by uh, meeting people. Some key takeaways, you know, if, if you're going to meet with other doctors, you can, during these interviews, you can, or informational interviews, you can, Ask them questions about their specialties and what they like to do and what they enjoy the most about their mode of practice. Here's an example of what you could do. Uh, you could even interview doctors. So you can interview doctors about their specialty and be like, hey, I just I saw that you were an expert in keratoconus treatments or myopia management or vision therapy. And I was hoping to just interview you for my private practice club. And you can even uh, uh, videotape it. You can even edit it and send it to them so they can post it on their website. And uh, that way, you know, you can say, hey, I, I made this video of my interview with you and, uh, and you know, you know, doctors actually appreciate that. It helps them build their um, their website SEO. If you just said, I did it for you, here's the video. That's the, no sweeter sounds than when someone says, I did it for you, especially if you're someone busy. So, you know, interviewing them and sharing the interviews afterwards is a, is a good spot to start. Just remember that one stone can ripple to eternity. You always learn something from something from someone else. Always think about how you can help others when you're doing this networking. Don't think about how they can help you and how they can give you a job, but think about what value you can generate for them. Think about what's new that you've learned maybe even at school because a lot of these optometrists, sometimes they're they're always fascinated by the new things that will, uh, that the autonomy students are learning at school. That's really cutting edge and you can tell them about that. Now, if you, uh, besides um, networking, which is of course the best way, you know, uh, one of the ways that I found filling opportunities and um you know, work uh, at the last minute was just um, know that online postings, you know, there's plenty of postings from uh, optometry schools, the AOA, optometry alliances, industry, corporate websites, etc. And know that whenever there's a posting, whenever any doctor or in the industry is looking to hire an optometrist, that person probably wants an optometrist right away. <laughs> like the sooner the better. So know that, you know, sometimes you just, um, go where the fish are, right? So um, online, like dating, a lot of people are finding dates online now. And that's the same thing with job hunting. It's, it's very similar to dating in a way is that uh, sometimes you have to go online and just find out where everything else is posted and just post there as well. I want to end with the last thing is that when you're doing your interviews, uh, this is uh, after you've put your foot in the door. And one thing that I love is something called the briefcase technique. So when you're interviewing, you know, go about as you normally do. Then one thing I recommend in the middle of it is if you can prepare like a sheet of paper, 
if you could anticipate what they might need from an optometrist, like let's say it's a private practice trying to grow their microbial management program. If you can say, you know, these are the microbial management protocols we did at the school. Uh, this is our follow-up schedule treatment modalities of choice, you know, concentrations of atropine we'd start with. Something like that. If you if you even just put it on a piece of paper and show them like protocols and things like that that you learned along the way, there's something theatrical about pulling out your briefcase and taking out the sheet of paper and say, hey, you know, for this interview, I prepared something because I thought about what you might be looking for to help you. When you're always thinking about generating value like that, the person interviewing is, is always like, wow, that's uh, very uncommon. And uh, anyone that hires and has interviews a lot of people like I do and will be definitely blown away. Someone that shows that extra level of preparation, that next level of effort that's so rare. So I call it the briefcase technique putting out a sheet of paper from a briefcase, showing things that you've written down that uh, how you can generate more value for the person interviewing you. And that's the end of the lecture. So um, again, the, the best jobs are always found. If you're looking for a job, the best way to find another job, a new job out of school is networking, meeting doctors, sending emails, taking people out to lunch, dropping by with brownies and introducing yourself to the doctors in the area that you're looking to practice in. That is by far the best way to find the best opportunities. The way to go about it is, you know, email, I think is a great way versus cold calling or dropping by unannounced, posting things on Facebook, online, on Instagram, uh, and of course, looking online through all the websites, through optometry school listings, uh, local buying groups, the AOA, etc. Again, a big, a big thank you to VSP for this educational grant. Without their support, lectures like this are quite impossible. And I hope you found this lecture useful. So go out there and uh, connect with other doctors. And you can email me at drmyinsightvisionoc.com. You can email me. And I might know someone in the area that you're looking to practice in um, because I run into a lot of optometrists. And you'll always be surprised at what happens by just putting yourself out there and uh, just introducing yourself.